absolutely. And then, and speaking of the Lions, back onto the the, the games themselves. Yeah. Um, there is a game this weekend, the first official game of the tour, um, which is going on in Ellis Park. It is the Lions against the Lions. Yes, we the, have the Lions v. the Lions. The Emirates Lions or Golden Lions, depending on your persuasion. The Joburg Lions yeah. against the British and Irish Lions. And uh, yeah, this is a, it's, got, it's the colour is that, yeah. that they're both Lions, but um, it's, it's, it's definitely... Uh, an, an ease in kind of game for the Lions themselves I would think well it is but, and um, it isn't it is in Ellis Park which will be a factor um, yeah. That's on. it's on this Saturday the 3rd Kickoff is 6pm local time or 5 o'clock BST which is where we are um, it's going to be refed by AJ Jacobs of, of South African Reunion with uh, Barnsey and Piper on the sidelines and Stuart Berry in the Timo um, box so uh, yeah it's it's the first warm up game for the Lions after they arrive in South Africa so the little bit of acclimatising they'll have to do but between potential jet lag there shouldn't be too much jet lag but also just the altitude and uh, getting acclimatised is kind of the, the factor I'm, I'm sure it's, it's actually something that uh, Gatland will probably be pleased about having it, but uh, we're going to see some chopping and changing of the squad over the next two games because they have this game on Saturday and then on Wednesday next they face the Sharks in Ellis yeah. Park as well before moving on to Loftus Fair as well to face the Bulls on Saturday next. So it's yeah. two altitude tests, first against the Lions this one and then the Sharks over the couple of days, so expect pretty much the whole squad to be seen over the course of those two days. Or yeah, two games. and uh, Gatland was, was certainly saying that everyone should... Everyone should get a start over the yeah. course of the three games. We don't, as it stands, have the squads to hand, um, unfortunately. We have the squads, uh, just not the teams. Not the, not the match <laughs> yeah. day squads. Yeah. Um, so there is a, it, it, we're still up in the air as we shoot this as to, as to which way Gatlin will go. He's obviously got some decisions to make in terms of the balance of getting things right. There might be a case that um, the best thing to do is to is to get the, the, the framework of the test team playing on the Saturdays to get into that rhythm that's what they yeah, usually do and then having before. the midweek teams in, in, in the interim I think you likely go back to that model so it's not improbable in my mind that he that he sticks with a similar sort of team that, pl- that played but brings in the likes of Russell and the guys who've been missing yeah. uh, into this into the squad um, as well maybe Sam Simmons yeah, getting a few like guys this. a run out but uh, yeah it'll be, it'll be a nice second test for the Lions and really just hoping to, to keep on course maybe some different personnel but the same outcomes I'm looking yeah. for line out solidity defensive solidity and the, and, and, and then ball in hand attack what what do they want to do when they have the ball how are they going to try and uh, move it what's their shape looking like uh, yeah. all of that is going to slowly reveal itself over the course of these uh, well rather quickly reveal itself over the, the course of these very condensed games and these fixtures that will be coming thick and fast from this moment on because we'll have it'll be rolling over very very quickly and he'll have to kind of put the pieces together it was as we were saying it was a very encouraging start against Japan they, they performed mm-hmm. very cohesively they looked like a team with a plan uh, they looked like a fit team a strong yeah. team and uh, they yeah. were happy to pick offloads off one another they did find it easy enough against the soft Japanese defence like I'm thinking hard lines from the centres worked and that mm-hmm. was really all that was asked of the centres Yeah, and I'm wondering if that continues I mean it's a very Gatlin model you know I think Jamie Roberts uh, back in Parks. the day Hadley Parks, you know, to, like keeping it simple, just big guys running hard lines, and then using your tippericks as he would have done back in the day to to, to, to access those extremities along with the quality passing from ten. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to see if that shape continues or if a Chris Harris, if he gets a shout, can bring something different. Um, are the centres going to link up or are they very much sort of working a slow system yeah. are we going to see Jewel distributing as the option I know Faz is in there as ostensibly that role yeah he um, came in didn't he towards the end of the of the game and it's definitely an option and I don't mm. know if he's written it off yet I just feel like he might be leaning against it from even just from a defensive point of view that might make sense but they're certainly looking to expand the way they attack it, it, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they do it. I feel like against this Lions team, yeah. they can they can go any number of ways and win it, but yeah. I'm curious it's to more see important what they want to do in the midfield. Yeah. Are they going to kick most of what they have? Are they going to try and try some set-piece attacks? Mm-hmm. Well, just certainly, see, I, I think yeah. they will be tempted to kick just because of the altitude. It'll be fun to see how far up in the sky. <laughs> how much hang time can you get on a low box kick? Can it be nine seconds up there? Possibly. Um, there, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of scope for kicking up at, uh, up at Ellis Park. As, as the Lions, the other Lions, the Emirates Lions kind of know, um, they, they'll know it a bit better. It's an interesting test. It's one that I think Gatland, just knowing him and like knowing some of the rumblings from the camp pre, uh, pre-Japan pre game were that they were doing a lot of 
intensive kind of fitness training and kind of weights training and stuff now yeah. here they are at altitude for their first two they games did, they did altitude um, training they did altitude they, they, training they, as well i've so. seen that on the little video they had they had these little masks that yeah. they were wearing that were filtering you yeah, know gatland the, is the always a man for that so it makes yeah. perfect sense to me that the ellis park tests are falling here or not tests but the the warm-up games are falling here at this part of the schedule early doors yeah. where he can get that in the bank and then go further south and just be acclimatised and no jet lag at all for his charges well yeah the funny one is that apparently there's a chance that the games might be moved to Cape Town so mm. if that happens obviously that will remove the altitude factor it will but uh, obviously they have to act in for the time being as though that's not the case and, and that's perfectly understandable yeah um, Yeah. so the the, li- the Lions are, are just looking to build on where they have been put, in, put a bit more together win comfortably and, and, and work on some combinations it's not it's not rocket science I don't think I think the teams on paper are something of a mismatch for those for the uninitiated watching the Lions this year like there's there's a few words that spring to mind loose is one defensively wobbly is another, is another. Um, they are a fun team to watch they, they are. attack they're, they they're High dreadfully inconsistent and they lose a lot but they also put games together and one thing that's been true is that it, club sides can often surprise you um, in, in, in these Lions series. They often have some of their biggest and best performances. It's such an occasion to yeah. host the Lions as a club side that they do tend to put it all together. And when this Lions side puts it all together, they're flowy, they reach the extremities, they test the defence, they, 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 they and then they're pretty ruthless once they get in behind you. They love, they love the open air of Ellis Park. They run the ball really well. They've got lightning quick wingers, and they take tries when they're available to them. And they they tend to have high scoring fun games. They do. They do um, indeed. You yeah, know, they're often good spectacles up in in Ellis Park between the, this line side and the bigger packs that tend to come with them. It's not a dissimilar test to what Japan were providing probably from a, from a British and Irish Lions yeah. point of view is just yeah they're going to try and move it they're going to try and find the extremities going to try and run them around a bit of, up at altitude and try and see if they can't find seams so it'll be a good test of defensive cohesion and kind of the contact area uh, the uh, Emirates Lions themselves have named a 26 man squad um, it features the likes of uh, former Springboks like uh, Dreyer, Yanni Duplessis, Yako Creel are all in there, which is yeah. kind of interesting to see. So there will be some quality. Yanni uh, is going to play against the Lions. He played for them in, in, in the Sharks uh, in 2009. That's right. Yeah. So he's, he's going to play against them again um, 12 legend. years later. A legend uh, of the game. Yeah, Yanni's great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, good to see him in there. Um, the last time the Lions, the Golden Lions, faced the Lions in 09, actually it finished 74-10 to the British and Irish Lions so <laughs> so hopefully this uh, uh, this yeah, iteration Brian will be Brian in that team yeah, that's true that's yeah. true um, just in terms of form for this uh, the Golden Lions or the Emirates Lions whichever you prefer uh, they they started their Curry Cup last or two weeks ago uh, it started with a pumping at the hands of the Pumas which is not encouraging 39-10 they no. did get back on the horse and beat the Western Province last week 38-12 but in the Rainbow Cup they were the weakest of the Safa sides with only one win uh, in the yeah. whole duration of it one of their games was covid did off covid did yeah. but uh, but they did uh, did obviously show their frailty in that one couldn't quite string things together and they do have a couple of beacons of hope they have a 20 year old uh, out half who will probably start for them uh, Jordan Henriksa who's uh, recently usurped to their fella who's been there uh, and he fo- El- apparently Elton of course Elton, Elton, Elton Elton's off to gone. France yeah. and now playing in the box squads so exactly. no, no Elton no Elton Lions, available yeah. for the Lions so yeah they have this young 20 year old flyer who's apparently got a very good, assured kicking game and good at playing the territory up there at, uh, at the high altitude and they also have uh, Vincent uh, Shituka, Shituka who's uh, only 22 years old and he's a back row star they've really t- touted him for great great things at uh, the underage level with the spring box uh, at under 20 level and he's kind of coming through so some good cool some yeah. good players there i mean um, any any time you get a side that attacks there there there's always scope for intrigue and i think one area that that, that japan might, would, would isolate is that the lions were were giving up the uh, the outside of the 15 channel now they were mm-hmm. in some sense kind of baiting them in and allowing the henshaw shoot to get them they were drifting really well whenever yeah. japan did they get were to the watching extremities Shima like a hawk recognizing were, him as the danger and um, uh, they, they ultimately didn't give up much but the lions will fancy getting the ball to the extremities and, and even dropping it on a toe if the lions yeah. shut down that space but just working the tram lines yeah. and really trying to disjoint the, the lions defense one suspects it's not going to be as 
as uniform and reliable a centre partnership as Henshaw and Aki, who of mm-hmm. course played club footy together as well as test footy. Yeah. Um, they won won the league with Connacht way back when. Like there, there's some chance Harris comes in or Farrell comes in and it looks a, or Elliot Daly of course as well. Mm-hmm. It looks a little disjointed then again. So it, I think te- uh, getting to those extremities, working that thirteen channel, definitely going to be an area yeah. where the Lions Start, look. And they are able well. to do that. Starting able to well attack. would be good. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a key. We said it for Japan. If they can, it's the same yeah. equation. If you can catch. They're still chopping and changing. They still haven't quite found their feet, although it was a very encouraging showing against Japan. Yeah, get after them early. If they can go 7-0 up or something, yep. that'd be a great start for Control them. Control the territory with the long kicking game. You know the field and run the ball when you can. Yeah. Get to the outside. Yeah. But don't, like it's funny how these things can snowball. Like If they have to defend for any length of time, they'll concede. They, they won't be able to handle the Lions, I don't think. No, I agree. And they're, yeah, so they're great. Like, little things like a knock-on in midfield yeah, when they're trying criminal. something could, or from could a turn box the game kick. around. Yeah, the, the aerial game yeah. will just have to be dialed because yeah. the box kicks are inevitable. Yeah. And uh, the drops don't have to be inevitable. But if they become inevitable, then the scrums that become scrum yeah. penalties, that become line-outs, that become mauls, that become tries, all of that can just yeah, snowball, it's snowball very it, quickly. It, exactly. So um, they, they have to start alert if they're to have any chance of pulling off a shock and making it into a good game. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's definitely a fun one to, to, to kick off the tour. I'm, I'm comfortable to, in saying that I think the Lions will do it. I, I would, uh, <laughs> well, given that there are only, there's only the <laughs> Lions know, playing. Even, <laughs> didn't even register I'm, I'm with almost me. certain that the Lions will win yeah, this game. I, I, yeah, <laughs> there you go. I'll go for the Unless Lions. Unless it's a draw. <laughs> in which case, no one wins. <laughs> yeah, the Lions of the British and Irish variety should be confident of a win here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we don't have the team, so we don't know what specific combinations they're going to be looking at but in general just gelling gelling more as a team hopefully some guys put their hands up and 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 call, uh, allow for a more interesting conversation going forward about who's in form and who's not I, I, I actually would love to see them throw Falato back out there because he had a rough showing Needs to put to his try. hand back yeah, up yeah yeah um, and Sam Simmons I know he's coming off the premiership uh, he might he, he might, might be quarantined kept, kept in reserve um, until yeah. the until the Sharks game might be the way they go with him yeah but, uh, yeah it's a, the, the back row stocks are so exciting and they're all such similar players that form is going to be a huge factor yeah. in who gets Curry. in it's Curry Curry yeah. yeah guy we haven't mentioned yet as well there's all the yeah, yeah they're, 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 the, the well goes the deep niche, for the Lions yeah. <laughs> the Nish who we missed out on as well yeah. so uh, yeah it's like it's such a such a tight schedule tight turnover that you do want to get minutes under these guys belts you also just want to see pretty patterns you want to see a bit of ambition Reece with Samet them scoring Reece tries. Samet scoring tries the, they, both wingers got on the board in the first game they'll be determined to keep little, checking little things like all, like that off you're playing good rugby if both of your wingers are on the board and you're winning games with multiple tries and yeah hopefully some pretty tries there are very often some some quite pretty coast to coast tries in, in Lions games yeah. at Dallas Park so hopefully this is no exception do you have a scoreline prediction? Oh, you know, quite a few to not that many. Um, I don't <laughs> think it'll be as big a tonking as the other one. What did I say? 74-10 back in 09. Nah. I think it'll be a little tighter than that. Um, yeah. I think, I'm thinking maybe 45-14. Okay, yeah. 45-12, a missed kick okay. from, a, from, a nice, from a nice corner I'd touch say, line I'd conversion. I'd say 45-20. Yeah, you're going to give the Lions more credit than I am. Yeah, uh, why not? Yeah, okay. I can do what you're I taking, want. You're basically taking the over on my prediction there. Sort of, or taking the under in terms of difference, the difference depending on yeah, your point of view. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a fun game to kick off the tour, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that one on Saturday. Absolutely. Yes, and so wraps up the Lions for this week. Really, I bet that's uh, that's that's all that's all that we have on the Lions for right now. They're playing this weekend. They'll be back against the Sharks. We may drop another vid in the interim, as we said at the top at the top of the show. But we are going to park the Lions for now and move on to other matters international rugby. Thank you for tuning in to the Overlap Rugby podcast. If you enjoyed what you hear, please like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below as well. We enjoy hearing your opinions too. Thank you.